All right, in the last video, we set up communication to our compact logics. And now I'm going to show you how to add those tags to our Wonderware historian. So let's go to the management console of our Wonderware historian. And the first thing we're going to do is go to our data acquisition field and we're going to click on IDAS. Now remember, this is the data acquisition service for Wonderware. And you can have multiple IDAS. In this case, mine exists locally. We're going to right click it and add new IO server. So we're going to tell our IDAS where this IO server exists on what machine. And then we're going to also tell it the type of IO server. So in this case, we set up DAS ABCIP in our last video. So we are going to want to use Sweet Link there. And we can hit finish. Go ahead and expand IDAS and you can see what we just created. Go ahead and select it. And if we just take a quick look at our DAS ABC IP, we're going to break it all the way down just to verify the topic or device group we set up because we want it to be exactly the same. So PLC1, I'm going to right click my IO server, go to my topic name and type in PLC1. Defaults are fine and hit finish. Now we're going to expand DAS ABC IP. You can see PLC1 there. Right click it and now we can add tags. So in this case I'm going to add a new analog tag and this is going to be tank level. So this name right here doesn't have to match what's, in, what's actually in the PLC. And hit next and we'll give it a description. So now all of our clients that are going to advise this single tag will be able to see the description that we give it in our historian. We'll give it a engineering unit. Engineering units do matter. As you can see, some are feet per second, gallon per day, gallon per hour. So some of the retrieval modes will utilize those engineering units. We'll give it a max value and let's go ahead and hit next. So now here is where we're going to specify the actual PLC address. So mine actually is tank underscore level in the PLC, but if you had Modbus, it would be 40,000 and whatever register you'd be looking at. Let's talk about the storage methods really quick. So you can do forced. Forced says we're going to store everything as it comes into our historian as fast as possible. Delta says we're going to store this data only when it changes. Cyclic is a little bit like Delta, a little bit more efficient in terms of storage space because it's only going to store a value based on the rate you specify if that value were to change. And then not stored is no longer storing the tag. So let's say you no longer need to capture data from a piece of equipment, but for regulatory reasons, you still need that information in case you have to go back to it. Well, you don't want to delete the tag, but you don't want to store it either. So um, go ahead and select your storage method. I would say a, a majority of people select Delta and leave it the defaults there. And then dead band below, um, you can specify if you want it to change by a certain value amount or a certain percentage before you actually store it and finish. Okay, so there's tank level. And I'm gonna add a discrete tag, so let's right click it one more time here. And this is gonna be my agitator tag. So I'm just simply looking to see whether my agitator is either on or off. So we'll give it a description again of this tag. And let's go ahead and hit next and we'll type in the actual PLC address or there as you can see the item name. We'll go ahead and next and select our storage method and finish. So uh, I'm also going to show you how to import tags from an InTouch app. So we'll select our IDAS and we'll say import tags. So you're going to go ahead and hit next and we're going to add. So on our network, where does this InTouch app exist? And we want to look for the tag name.x file. We'll hit open. As you can see the app path there. Go next. 
Now, if you had multiple apps, you could either put a prefix or a suffix. In this case, I've got one, so I'll bypass. And now here, you can specify which tags you actually want to import. And I'm just going to select all of them, but you could do certain topics or certain tags, as well as specify a storage method. Go ahead and hit Next and Finish. So it's going to go through quickly and import the tags for my app. And the app I'm actually looking at um, is the Reactor Demo. So let's right click and go to Commit Pending Changes. So this, before any of those tags actually go into our historian, we have to commit them to the historian. So here's everything we're doing to it. We're going to hit OK and Commit. So now these changes actually go into our historian. And let's go ahead and just verify that these values are coming in. So I'm going to go into one of my clients, in this case Trend, click on our historian, and we're going to go ahead and just expand. And you can click on the root of the historian or go to these different groups. I'm going to go to my all analog tags, and there's some tags from our app, but let's look for tank level. I'll double click it to add it to our chart, and it looks like we've got data actually coming in. I'll throw it into real time mode. And I'll click on discrete tags in this case, and there's our agitator tag. So we'll double click it, add it to our chart. Looks like data's coming in. I'll stack the traces so they're not on top of each other. And everything looks good. So I'm going to minimize this one, and we're going to create a new trend so we can see these side by side. So I'm going to go to my InTouch nodes now the node where I've imported it from, and here's the app that's generating the data, it's the reactor demo. I'm going to select a number of tags from that application, and if you hold control on your keyboard, you can select them, and then you can just simply drag them over. Now I'm going to hit play, and just verify the data is coming in. 